Good morning, I'm Pastor Norman, and welcome to Happy Grace United Methodist Church, where we learn and grow as followers of Jesus Christ to serve others and transform lives here, across the street, and around the world. Our sanctuary remains closed for reasons of safety and health, but we are glad to be coming to you via live stream, and we welcome you to worship today from across town and around the country and around the globe. We are glad you are joining us for worship. Today we celebrate the third day of Christmas, the festival of the Incarnation, the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. Thank you to Lynn and Jerry uh, for singing today's theme hymn for us. Later on in the worship service, the lyrics will be available on screen so that we can sing along at home. At, two four, at 1045 today, we have the opportunity to join a conference call for a 10 or 15 minute chat, dial a number that is there in front of you on the screen and that was sent out in yesterday's email. Listen to the greeting and then please wait to be led into the chat by Dan. Uh, he'll be letting us in. Thank you for your continued support of Christ's ministry here. Your continued faithfulness and generosity is critical to our ongoing mission. The Susquehanna Ministerium Tour of Historic Churches that was set for today at 2 p.m. will be virtual this year. Please go to the Ministerium Facebook page to see video tours of some of the historic churches here in Happy Grace. Next Sunday, we'll celebrate the Wesleyan Love Feast. Please try to have something to eat and something to drink handy for worship. Also, next Sunday, we'll be celebrating Epiphany. And we're going to have frankincense and myrrh scented incense and crystals of these plant resins available to pick up and take home later this week, and I'll, I'll send out an email when those are available to pick up. I'm assisted today in leading worship by Harry, a member of our Staff Parish Relations Committee. He'll be calling us to worship. Christ is born, give him glory. Christ has come down from heaven, receive him. Christ is now on earth, exalt him. Sing to the Lord all the earth, praise him in joy, O you nations, for he has been glorified. As a sign of the reconciliation with Jesus has made and between us and God and our desire to be reconciled with others, we announce God's peace. May the peace of the Lord be with us all. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, Almighty God, by the birth of your holy child Jesus, you gave us a great light to dawn on our darkness. Bestow upon us that most excellent Christmas gift of love to all people, so that the likeness of your Son may be formed in us and that we may have the ever-brightening hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Savior, amen. As we get ready to go to God in prayer as a praying congregation, I'm going to share with you some joys and concerns of which I'm aware, and if you recognize any of these folk, uh, please, uh, please reach out to them with a phone call or card just to let them know that that we have them in our prayers i bid your prayers this week for the family and friends of bob um, the husband of alice bob died last sunday after battling lymphoma and we cel celebrated his life and resurrection yesterday i bid your prayers for all those who have lost loved ones to covid 19. i bid your prayers for sarah uh, the mother of judy and barb husband of Joe and grandmother of Julia and Lydia. She's in Upper Chesapeake Medical Center having surgery today to repair a hip that was fractured in the fall of yesterday. And just to note, uh, those of you who saw my email I sent out last night, there is no H in Sarah. That is my mistake. Also, I bid your prayers for Don, uh, Lynn's husband. Don is recuperating from surgery for cancer. I bid your prayers for Ann, the wife of David. David, who is a cousin of Barbara, Michelle, Christy, and Sue, and is battling cancer. I bid your prayers for Barbara from Bel Air, who is a friend of our brother Jim. Barbara is battling cancer. 
I made your prayers for Richard, Pam's father, and Jesse's grandfather. He is in the midst of physical therapy after a hip replacement. And I made your prayers for Pam's mother, who is his primary caregiver. I made your prayers for Gary, uh, who is the brother-in-law of our assistant sexton, Doug. Gary is battling cancer that has returned for a third time. I made your prayers for Mary, the mother of Carolyn and grandmother of Savannah. Mary is recuperating from surgery. I bid your prayers for all those presently in quarantine, including Cindy, the wife of Tom. I bid your prayers for travel mercies and safety for Rick and Alicia and their family as they're traveling to attend a wedding and visit family. I bid your prayers for public health and medical workers, caregivers, and researchers everywhere. Please pray for an end to racism, for unity within our nation, and pray that we become the nation God wants us to be. I bid your prayers for all those who are without shelter in this present winter weather. And I bid your prayers for the people of Nashville, Tennessee, after the Christmas Day bombing that occurred there. As we pray this week, let us thank God for successful surgery for Robert, the father of Amy and grandfather of Emily, Preston, and William. Robert is home and healing well. Let us thank God for successful surgery for Lisa, who is recuperating at home. Please keep her and her husband and primary caregiver, Kim, in your prayers as she continues to heal and, and requires assistance for at least two more weeks. And uh, let us thank God that Kelly, the stepdaughter of Bill, is doing well and back home, but please keep her in your prayers as well. She is scheduled for delivery the end of this month at the University of Maryland Hospital with specialists on standby for complications and that might occur during that birth. Let us thank God for all those who have successfully recovered from COVID-19. Let us thank God for medical workers, inoculators, makers of medical equipment, and vaccines and essential workers who are keeping things shipped and stocked. Let us thank God for the generosity of our community and congregation in helping provide a merrier Christmas for many families. Let us thank God for Christmas and New Year's greetings from Pastor Vladimir, his wife, Raiza, and Grace United Methodist Church in Silome, Estonia, a congregation that we help support. They wish us a lot of joy, blessings, and God's guidance for 2021. Let us praise God that Mary Jane and Bob are celebrating 61 years of marriage this Friday, January the 1st. The rosebud on the altar today is in honor of the birth of Mays Eddington, born to Matthew and Rebecca on December 21st, weighing 7 pounds, 14 ounces, and measuring 20 inches in length. McLean is the proud big brother, and Candy and Phil are the proud grandparents. This is their fourth grandbaby. And we rejoice today with Joyce, our sister Joyce, who is the sister of Muriel. Joyce celebrates her 90th birthday today. With our hearts and minds filled with these joys and concerns, let's turn to God in silent prayer as we share with God the joys and concerns we know that I have not named. Lord Jesus Christ, you came among us as an infant born long ago in Bethlehem. You came as the consolation of Israel, of God's people. So comfort all who mourn this day, that their grief may not overwhelm them, may not consume them. Heal all who are ill or injured or in recovery, that they may be renewed in body, mind, and spirit. Keep safe all those who are traveling or who are working to keep us safe or to make us well. And all who are without shelter and all those who are working for justice here and around the world, keep them safe. O oh, Consolation of Israel, thank you for successful surgeries, for healing, for those working to make us well and keep us safe. Thank you for friends both near and far away, and for the generous, for the generous spirit of those who give in this season. Thank you for love promises made and kept, for the wisdom of gathering years and the joy of new births. Most of all, thank you for your comfort in the midst of our hurts 
and wounds, O child of Bethlehem, who grew up to teach us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time in our worship service when I get to talk with the children. So I want to say hello today to Haley and Macy and Riley, to Molly and Adeline, to Charlotte and Lorelai, to Evelyn and Camille, to Ben, Charlie, and Ellie, to Jordana and Jasper, to Jesse and Maddie, Ian and Bodie, Taylor and Ellie, Emmy and Andrew, Hazel and Iris, Michael and Lillian, Elena and Eli, Breezy and Ileana, Amelia and Will, Wyatt and Scout, and Max and Zoe, and if I did not say your name, I greet you too. We are this season uh, thinking about some of the figures we find in nativity scenes. All nativity sets include picture or figures of Mary and Joseph. This is Mary and Joseph here. Mary and Joseph, and Joseph is actually supposed to have a walking stick, but somehow he got lost. Um, but uh, there's Mary and Joseph. And I have another set here to show you that's a little bigger. You will notice a sort of similarity in the, in the poses of Mary and Joseph. Both of these pairs have a similar look to them. Usually Mary and Joseph in our nativity sets are, are made to look as though they are rejoicing over the birth of baby Jesus or that they are adoring him uh, in, in some way. And, and that's appropriate because parents do rejoice over the birth of children. But there are other feelings too, it seems to me, that could be depicted, other feelings that were going on in that situation. I imagine they were both very tired, exhausted even. And we think of Mary and Joseph as also very patient, patient people. In today's Bible story, we hear about Mary and Joseph, and it seems that they're a little confused by all the things being said about this amazing baby that they have and the things that they will face in their future. But I believe maybe the biggest feeling that Mary and Joseph are having at the point in the story we hear today is they're looking forward. They're looking forward to raising this child, and they're looking forward to getting home back to Nazareth where things are comfortable and familiar. I imagine that's probably a big feeling that they were having. So this week, every time you pass the doorway of the kitchen in your home, when you go through the doorway into or out of the kitchen in your home, let's say, thank you God for my home, because it is a wonderful thing to have a home and to be at home. So thank you God for my home. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for our homes, a place to stay warm and dry and be safe. Please help those who have no home or where home is not safe. Thank you, God, for helping Mary and Joseph raise baby Jesus and for helping them to get home to Nazareth. Give parents everywhere energy and patience, wisdom and guidance, and keep them safe. Through Jesus our friend. Amen. So remember this week when you pass through the doorway of, your, of, of the kitchen in your home to say thank you God for my home. Faithful to the Jewish religious practice, the infant Jesus was circumcised and 40 days after his birth was presented to God in the temple. Thus our scripture lesson today comes from Luke chapter 2, 22 through 40 of the story that we just presented. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, 
a pair of turtle doves, or two pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, <clears throat> looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Holy Spirit, Simeon came to the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus in to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, <clears throat> which you have prepared in the presence of all people. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of the people of Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, <clears throat> the daughter of Phineal, the tribe of Asher. As she was of great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84, she never left the temple but worshipped there with fasting and praying day and night. At that moment she came and and to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The word of the God, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We've been exploring different names and titles given to Jesus the Christ in our gospel lessons throughout the season of Advent, and we continue that uh, sermon series now through Christmas, and we will end it next Sunday on Epiphany Sunday. Asking ourselves as we explore these different names and titles, what that means for us. What does it mean for us that our Savior has gone by these different names and titles. Today we explore the title, The Consolation of Israel. The Consolation of Israel. And we are reminded of the comfort that God brings us and the need to share that comfort with others. In our Gospel lesson, what is described is the presentation of Jesus in the Temple at Jerusalem. And as a part of that description, what is also described are two elderly Jewish prophets, Simeon and Anna, who are faithfully awaiting the coming of God's Messiah. Simeon has even been promised by the Holy Spirit that he will not die until he sees the advent of the Christ. In Luke's description of the waiting of Anna and Simeon and the revelation to them of the Lord's Messiah in the infant Jesus, two phrases are used. One is the redemption of Jerusalem, the redemption of Jerusalem, and the other is the consolation of Israel, the consolation of Israel. Both of these phrases mean the fulfillment of Jewish hopes for the Messiah to come. The long-awaited era of the Messiah has begun in the birth of Jesus. Simeon, inspired by the Holy Spirit, speaks in a poetic passage about the infant Jesus. He says that Jesus will be the source of salvation for all, for the entire world, the whole human race. And Mary and Joseph marvel at his word, marvel at the fact that God's salvation will be extended to everyone. And then 
foreshadowing the future arc of Jesus' life and ministry, Simeon adds that Mary will experience grief as part of this work of salvation. Now Simeon is ready to die. He has gotten to see the Messiah. And Anna apparently is telling anyone who will listen that Jesus is the redemption of Jerusalem, the Messiah. Stepping back and away from the technical meaning of the phrase consolation of Israel in Jesus' day, what does it mean for us? What does it mean that Jesus the Christ has come? First of all, it's important to know that the world into which Jesus was born was not unlike our own, beset by disease and violence and political turmoil. The famous Roman roads, the infrastructure that tied the empire together and allowed faster communication and transportation and better commerce, also aided in the transmission of disease. Epidemics, if not pandemics, began to be more prevalent. Additionally, Rome had conquered most, if not all, of the known world. But the so-called Pax Romana, the peace of Rome, was anything but peaceful. It's true that Rome imposed peace between the nations it conquered, but this was done by force and coercion. In essence, Rome garrisoned the world with its famous legions of soldiers. Was this really peace or just repression? The result of all that was the need to constantly put down boiling revolts and uprisings somewhere in the empire, and nowhere was this more evident than in Palestine. So there was ongoing violence and political turmoil. And for God's people, the hope for the Messiah, the consolation of Israel, was all bound up in hopes for freedom. For Jesus' people were an oppressed and downtrodden group, poor and heavily taxed by Rome. But what of us? What consolation does the advent of Christ in our lives bring today? What comfort does God offer in today's world? There are places where political repression still holds sway. We are quite free compared to God's people in Jesus' day, and quite free compared to many parts of the world today. But there are hurts in our world, many of them. There certainly is disease. We have a pandemic on our hands right now. There's political turmoil. We just came through a difficult election season. There is violence. The Black Lives Matter movement has arisen in answer to some of the endemic violence in our own culture and society. And there are countless personal hurts as well. There's the pain of grief when loved ones die. Christ brings consolation and healing to those who believe. There are the wounds of loss and sadness and disappointment. Whatever the source of those wounds, Christ brings comfort to those who trust him. There's the weariness of illness and caregiving when chronic pain or unrelenting responsibility wear us down. Christ brings healing, strength, stamina, and endurance when we lean on him. There's the ache of loneliness when it seems we're abandoned in the universe. Christ brings companionship to those who claim him. There are the very real and physical hurts of poverty, hunger, homelessness, and domestic violence. Christ offers hope and help. And there are a great many more hurts that we could name, a great many more human wounds that we could name this day. The truth is, God seeks to hold the entire earth in God's loving arms, God seeks to comfort us all. In our current Bible translations, the Gospel of John calls the Holy Spirit the Counselor or Advocate. But in the King James Version, the Gospel of John calls the Holy Spirit the Comforter, the Holy Comforter. God is our Holy Comforter. So one of our hymns by the Irish poet Thomas More invites us to come to God in Christ Come, ye disconsolate, where'er ye languish. Come to the mercy seat, fervently kneel. Here bring your wounded hearts, here tell your anguish. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Joy of the desolate, light of the stray, hope of the penitent, faithless and pure. Here speaks the comforter, tenderly saying, 
Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot cure. Finally, we're called to partner with God to address some of the human hurts we've named today. We're called to reflect God's love and grace in the world. We're called to share God's comfort with others, the comfort we have received ourselves. As the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. So we're called to share God's comfort, to console those who mourn, to empathize with those facing loss, sadness, or disappointment, to encourage those worn down by illness or caregiving, to accompany those who are lonely, and to work with others to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, protect the vulnerable and abused, end systemic racism, seek economic justice, and promote peace. For Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the consolation of Israel, our comfort. Thanks be to God. And we are called to share God's comfort with others in our often hurting world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. James Montgomery was the son of Moravian missionaries who died fairly young, leaving him orphaned at a, at, a, at a young age. He was probably 16, 17, 18, somewhere in that age when, when they died. He became an editor of a London newspaper, and he championed in that newspaper many good causes, some of which got him in trouble with, with the crown, with the law. In this hymn, he covers the whole width of the Christmas narrative, from angels to shepherds to sages or wise men or magi to Anna and Simeon, the saints that he names. But the saints can also refer to the second coming of Christ, to the saints and martyrs before the throne of God. So it's a double entendre there. The tune was written for this hymn by an organist, Henry Smart, who was blind at the time that he wrote it. And we're invited now to sing along at home this hymn, this carol, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
as we recommit our lives to Jesus the Christ child, thank you for your continued faithful support of Christ's ministry here. And now let us pray in silence as we commit to sharing God's comfort with others and ponder these two questions. Where does the world most need comforting? And what consolation does the advent of Christ bring us today? Child of Bethlehem, reborn in us today, take our hearts and lives and put them to your use. Inspire us to bring comfort to your people and consolation to all who mourn. Through your holy comfort, the spirit of your grace. Amen. A reminder that we can call into the conference call today at uh, 1045. And then uh, and there's the number, and we can wait after the greeting and let Dan uh, let us into the meeting. O Lord, now let your servants go in peace, according to your gracious word. Our eyes have seen the glory of salvation prepared for all the people of the earth, and we have seen the consolation of Israel in the face of Jesus the Christ child. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. And may God lift his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>